Hello everyone, this hour on Verbling, the next in my great short story series, we're working on our 40th short story and what will probably be our very last, at least for now. The 40th short story is J.G. Ballard's Manhole 69. Manhole 69 is a sci-fi story about the mental state of people whose brains are surgically altered to stop sleeping. The scientists proclaim this as a breakthrough, but as the worries about the role of dreaming and sleep grow, the scientists find it might be too late for their patients. Let's find out what happens Tuesday and Thursday in great short stories. So that's a little bit about the class. Here's a little bit about me. I'm John Eric, your verbling teacher for this hour. I'm an American teacher from New York, hanging out in Lisbon, Portugal to bring you this class. By the way, here are three quick rules to help you participate. Don't forget to turn off, tune in, and open up. That means turn off your microphone when you're not speaking so we can keep the classroom nice and quiet. Also, tune in to the new words you're learning Use them as actively as you can so I can correct you and give you feedback. Last, open up to your classmates. Relax and have fun. We're all here to learn, and this is a safe and respectful place to practice your English. Now, what I'm going to do right now is share my screen so you can see the story. Let's get it on screen. When you get that graphic, whoops. When you see that graphic, you know you're in the right place. Don't forget, the material is always at the bottom of the screen. So you've got the Join button here. Under the video window, you have our class material. If I have time, I'll put it in the chat window for you as well, so you can open it on your screen. OK? So let's get started. We have Daniel and we have Daniel, our two Daniels. Hello, Daniel and Daniel. How are you? Hello, good morning. Hello. Hello. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so we're going to have Mr. Sanchez and Mr. Corral today, so we know who's who. Corral. Yeah, but I can't say that. <laughs> Corral. <laughs> uh, and we have, we have Mr. Nacho, Mr. Nacho Fernandez. Hello, Nacho. How are you? Hi, fine. How are you? Very good. Nacho, have you been here before? Because I'm not sure no. if I remember you. No? First time? Yeah. Excellent. Where are you from? Spain. Spain is big. Yeah. Madrid. Madrid. Ah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, this is a Spanish class. <laughs> Daniel, Daniel, Mr. Sanchez, remind me where you were from. You were here last week, but I forgot. Yeah, I was uh, here, and uh, yeah, I'm yeah. here in Spain, too. But Madrid. where? In Madrid, Madrid. too? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know Nacho, then? <laughs> no. No? Madrid, Madrid is big, you know. <laughs> oh, right, right, right. Okay. I thought maybe you knew each other being from Madrid. Hey, by the way, what is that picture? You've got lots of books in your house. It's very nice, Daniel. Is that your library? Um... No, I, I was visiting Ireland and I did, I took this photo uh, there. Ah. It was a um, book shop. Lots of books. Yeah. <laughs> I thought this was your personal library. Because I would come and visit you. Okay. So listen. Mr. Sanchez and Mr. Corral. 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 Um, I'd like you to, to almost. help, almost, I'd like you to help Nacho catch up because he wasn't in this, he wasn't in the last class. So we've got J.G. Ballard. J.G. Ballard is a sci-fi writer, one of the great sci-fi writers in English in the 20th century, so you should know him. His work has been made into films, which you might know, like the movie Crash, which was a... 20 years ago uh, by David Cronenberg. What else? Empire of the Sun, 
directed by Steven Spielberg, based on his memoirs growing up, uh, about being uh, a boy growing up in a Japanese prison camp, so with the other uh, English prisoners. Um, so that's a little bit about his bio, but what's important about him, of course, is his work. So, Mr. Sanchez, maybe you can help Mr. Nasho and Adrian. I can't remember if you were in the class last Thursday. Can't remember if you were. Adrian, were you in the class? Were you in our this class on Thursday? Yes. It's great. Oh, okay. Okay. Good. Good. Okay. So, this is the longest short story we've read. It's quite long. So we're going to read a lot of it together. I, I was trying to send you some work over the weekend, but it wasn't possible. I just had too much work, so I couldn't. I wanted you to read ahead, but it wasn't possible. So we're going to read the next section together, see how far we get. Mr. Sanchez, what can you tell Nacho about part one of the story that we read together? Can you give a, a little summary of what you remember? Um. I was here the on Monday, or I I think on Tuesday. So I wasn't reading this story. Yeah. Oh, I thought you I were. I was reading other other uh, story. Ah, uh, okay, okay. So you yeah. need to catch up too. Okay. So let's go to Mr. Corral. 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 <laughs> <laughs> what can you tell? Mr. Sanchez and Mr. Nacho mm -hmm. in five sentences or less. Okay. In a nutshell, what did we find out in the first part mm -hmm. of the story? It's a sci-fi story. It's about a three human guinea pig. <laughs> yes, <laughs> guinea pigs, right. Guinea pigs. A, a, a doctor. A, Make a surgery. It's we don't not say the word make. make. Or yeah. Perform. Perform. Perform a surgery in the medulla. What is uh, the medulla? What is that? In the medulla is uh, from the brain ah. to the spine, in the back, in our back. Right, right. It's almost a Spanish word. I know. Uh, okay. Um, they now, what's the result of the surgery? Yeah, yeah. He get uh, the doctor get uh, uh, the human will never fall asleep. There you go. They 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 are living twenty hours a day. Really? Uh, in, in, in Portugal, it's twenty four hours a day. In Spain, wow. it's only twenty. I didn't know that. It must be the time difference. Twenty-four. Oh, twenty-four. Okay. And we let, let, are we are seeing what happened. Let's see if that's clear to everyone. How so they, how they take up mm, take up uh, the time all day. Exactly. So now show. So what happens to the guinea pigs according to what Daniel said? Now show what happened to the guinea pigs. Uh, they were performed a surgery. Exactly. Are the guinea pigs pigs or are they people? A uh, human. Yeah, guinea pigs is a way to say a human test subject. They're people, of course. And Daniel, Mr. Sanchez, what new ability do the people gain after the surgery? Um, they are able to. Um, be awake during for 24 hours. Yeah. In fact, we learned that they they cannot sleep. Even if they try, it's simply impossible. And they cannot get tired. So this is some miracle surgery. <clears throat> kind of, not exactly a futuristic story. It's just sort of a strange story. But he is a sci-fi author, among other things. A very psychological author, too. And Adrian, would you add anything to Daniel's description? Is there anything else we should know from last Thursday? Uh, mm, no, I don't remember. 
uh, effectively. Uh, okay, let me I ask you a different question. Right. Yeah. Okay. Tell me about, in your opinion, this is there's no right or wrong answer. In your opinion, how would you describe the mood of the story? The mood is the emotion that you felt or that the characters felt. What's the mood like? Okay. Uh, mm, the mood is, uh, I think it is, uh, uh, the, the feeling uh, of me. Yeah, that's is, what I want to know. Uh, Your feeling. Yeah, uh, is um, ap apocalyptic, is, I don't know, uh, is correct, uh, the word. Apocalyptic? Uh, Apoc apocalyptic. Yeah, yeah. There you yeah. go. Very good. Yeah, right. <laughs> <Apocalyptic>. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's because uh, 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 the this and uh, you can't you can't uh, sleep. It's, 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 sleeping is uh, is uh, important uh, for for. Human being, um, um, and and why? Uh, and why uh, you 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 know, you, uh, you can't uh, dreams. Exactly. Yeah. And that's one of the things that we're going to encounter coming up soon. What happens when you stop dreaming? So that's a good point. And I agree with you. It seems apocalyptic, not just because of the scenario, the premise. But also, <clears throat> the location. Daniel, do you remember where this takes place? What What's the environment? Are we outside in the mountains, climbing trees, listening to the birds? Singing? Maybe a hospital in the middle of the forest. <laughs> well, we don't get to see a outside. A creepy, creepy hospital. Creepy hospital. Mm. Yeah, it has a kind of... My feeling was that it was very sterile, white, sterile, kind of inhuman space. I don't know. Did you get that feeling too? Mm -hmm. So far, no. <laughs> because well, I, do, I don't understand every word. Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the feeling that I got, that we're in a sterile place, like a white, clean but not a place that's comfortable, you know, kind of bright lights everywhere, no place to hide. So for me, that's a very nervous, uh, I get a very nervous feeling. I wouldn't want to be in that situation. Okay, I think we got everything we need to go to part two. So let's start reading, and I might ask you some comprehension questions along the way, just to make sure... Oh, are we on part three? Oh, we were on part three, not on part two. Wait a second. I got my parts mixed up, I think. Yeah. Wait a second. On part three. Whoops. Yeah, we are. Oh, geez, look at this. Okay, my mistake. I guess we had started last Tuesday. That's why I got confused. Okay, so we're going to pick it up on part three, but basically... All we know so far is the surgery has been formed, and we left off at the moment we saw the patients trying to fill the time, that they, the new time that they had. The lights were turned on so that they could never experience night. Uh, that's basically where we picked up. They're in a recreation room or something like that. So let's find out what happens next. So Daniel, Mr. Karel. I, I can I can add something. Uh, yeah. The three guinea pigs mm -hmm. are uh, uh, they have a partner, a normal partner, uh, um, doctor assistant, Morley. Yeah, yeah. It's try it's try to follow them. <laughs> it's trying to follow them. Right. So Morley is the doctor. The I don't know if he's a doctor or an uh, assistant. I don't know. Uh, well, we'll find out. I'm not sure either, to be honest with you. 
Uh, I don't remember. I have to look again. Yeah. So, why don't you get started there? You take the first part. Okay. okay. While he would wait for Morley to move, he checked the time from the clock mounted against the wall. 12.20. Morley yawned, his face <coughs> drowned under the rear skin. He looked tired and dropped. He slumped down into the armchair, face in one hand. Lang reflected how frail and primitive those who slept could sound seem. <laughs> Their minds sinking off each evening under the load of accumulating toxins. The age of their awareness, war and freight. Suddenly, he realized that at that very moment, Neil himself was asleep. A curiously disconcerting vision of Neil huddled in a rumpled bed tube floors above, his blood sugar low, low and his mind drifting, rose before him. By the way, who is Lang? Who are we talking about here? Uh, Who's Lang? What? The guy, the guy that uh, you're... One of the three... New human. Right. One of the three patients. Patient, patient. Right. Okay, keep going. Lang laughed at his own concept and Morley retrieved the rock he had just moved. I must be going blind. What am I doing? No, Lang said. He started to laugh again. I've just discovered I'm awake. Morley smiled. We we'll have to put down to put that down as one of the saying of the week. He replaced the rock, sat up, and looked across at the table tennis pair. Gorrell had hit a fast backhand low over the net, and Avery was running after the ball. They seemed to be okay. How about you? So, what are they doing here? Uh, Morley, it's about to fall asleep. Uh, right. <laughs> the patient uh, uh, are laughing, and they are uh, beginning to to see a regular human as a <laughs> a, a lower species. Uh, kind of, yeah. <laughs> Like these animals that, yeah. that have to suffer yeah. this strange thing. And look. They, they are almost God. And look at this. He replaced the rook. What was he doing if he replaced the rook? You know? A uh, rook. Uh, it's, a, it's a bird. No, nope, not a bird. Part of a game, though. Whoops. Why is this? This is not the right word. Oh, sorry, I made a little mistake here. That's why. Let's fix that. I'll, po I'll post it. I'll post the link here. Thecamera.com. Oh, what? What? Why is this? This is the wrong definition. Well, I'll put it there anyway. <laughs> it's not the right definition. It's not the one I'm looking for. A rook is a chess piece. When you're playing chess. The rook is the castle. A castle. When you're playing chess, Shadrez. Chess. Ah, okay, okay. So uh, that's what that's what it should say here. Let me just double check. Mm -hmm. I hope that's what it says. A cloud of fine particles. No, that's not it. Cone-shaped pile of hay. Oh, this is the wrong definition. That's completely wrong. Uh-oh, I have to change that. I can't believe that's the only definition. It's impossible. There we go. It's this definition. This is what I want. Chess piece. Chess piece that can move in any number of unoccupied squares. So I have to change my definition because it didn't come up. Let me change it. There we go. 
So, to stay awake, they're trying to play chess. <laughs> okay. Mr. Sanchez, why don't you continue with the dialogue on 8 and 9? Oh, what happened to Sanchez? Mr. Sanchez, are you there? Mr. Yes, no, sorry. Ah. Um, right on top of myself, Lang said, his eyes click up and down the board, and he moved before Morley got, got his breath back. What board sure. are we talking about here? What board? Board. What kind of board is it? Remember the rook? Yes. So what kind of board is it? The board, it's um, a table. Yeah. Como se dice? Chadrez. I can only say it in Portuguese. I don't know in Spanish. Chedrez. How do you say that in English? Do you know? Chess. Uh, chess, right. Yeah. It's a chess board. Okay. <laughs> Not a table. It's a chessboard. They're playing chess and Morley is falling asleep. <laughs> Keep going. Um, usually they went right through into the end game, but tonight Morley had to concede on the 20th move. Good, he said. Uh, encouragingly? Encouragingly. Encouragingly. Okay. Uh, you'll be able to take on Neil soon, like another? No, actually the game bored me. I can see that's going to be a problem. You'll face it, give yourself time to find your legs. Um, Lamb pulled one of the batch albums out. No, 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 not batch. That's Bach. The great composer, Bach, Johannes Sebastian Bach. Bach. Okay. Bach. Go, go on? Yep. Okay. Uh, in the record cabinet, he put a Brandenburg concerto on the turntable and low, low the sapphire. 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 Okay. As the rich contrapuntual pattern chin out he sat back listening intently to the music. Chimes out. Chime out. Chime, I'll put a link there. Chime is what a bell does. So I'll see if I can put a quick link there for you too. There we go. Uh, no, it didn't work. Hold on. I have to fix this. Let me just quickly cite. If you want to search in your own specific place in the research window, site, two colons, and then your website. I'm using vocabulary.com. I'll put a little link there for you. Chime is what a bell does. <clears throat> okay. So, just a quick question, Mr. Sanchez. What do you think it means to say, find your legs? Have you heard that expression? Mm, no, it's the first time. It's the first time for everything. <laughs> they say the first time is the best. <clears throat> has anyone heard that expression before? No. This has to do with sailors. <clears throat> when you're on a boat, what happens to your balance when you're on the boat for a while? Throw up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and what happens when you go back to land? Is it easy to walk around after you've been on a boat no. for hours? Yeah, like a duck. You have to find your legs. Mm -hmm. So that you don't walk like a duck, you have to find your legs. Mm -hmm. So, Sanchez, what legs does he have to find? It's not his <clears throat> sea legs. So what does he mean here by find your legs? What does he have to get used to, Mr. Sanchez? Honestly, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Make an educated guess. Okay. You, you know what's happened so far. So what do you think he's referring to? Remember, find your legs means get used to being on the land. 
after you've been on a boat. Well, he's not a sailor, but he is a patient, right? He's a patient at a hospital. <clears throat> right? So, so what does he have to get used to? What what happened to him? What was the surgery he had? Remember? Um, the operation. Yeah. What was the operation? Um, that uh, he's able to stay awake twenty four hours. So uh, I suppose uh, that um, uh, it takes time to find his legs. Find. Yeah. That's right. Now that you know the expression, you have to use it all day long. <clears throat> when you're at work later today, find something to find your legs. I don't know. When you arrive to work, I want you to say, now that I'm at work, I have to find my work legs. When you get home, you have to say, now I'm at home, I have to find my home legs. Until you can't possibly forget the expression. Find your legs. Okay, very good. So he's getting used to he's he's getting used to it and he has this realization that he's awake and that maybe he's somehow different. <laughs> he's starting to feel it. At least we get a little sense of that. I okay. Have a, I have a question in the Go for text. It. Yes. Uh, what it means uh, lower the safari. <clears throat> I have no idea. Okay. No idea. <laughs> I Sapphire is a, it's a bird. Wow. Sapphire is a is a is a precious oh, a color. Yeah, a precious blue gem. Sapphire. Oh. But here he's talking about the Brandenburg concerto on the turntable. Mm -hmm. For you young people out there, a turntable is when we used to have something called a record mm -hmm. or disco. <laughs> we don't have those anymore. We have MP3s. So the sapphire is probably the needle that you put on the record. But I've never heard I've never heard anyone say sapphire before, so I'm not sure, but I think that's what it is. Did you have a record player when you were young, Daniel? Yeah, yeah. I have one on my mother's house. There <clears throat> they have they have better sound. Than, than almost anything else, but we don't use them anymore. So I guess the sapphire is the arm where it has the needle on it. Mm -hmm. I think that's what it is. Not sure. But he lowers the sapphire and the rich contrapunctual patterns. The music chimes out. Chime like a bell. You know, the bell sounds. It chimes out. So I guess he's putting the needle on the record, I would imagine. Okay, so we're going to jump forward in time here. Uh, so after the music, let's pick it up there. We're on to Mr. Adrian. You were here last week. Why don't you take the next part? Okay. Molly uh, thought, absurd. How fast can you go? Three weeks ago, you were strictly uh, a pet cat. Hit cut or hit cut. The next few hours passed rapidly. At one third, they went up to the Shehori, Shehori, where Morley and one of the interns gave gave them a quick physical checking the renal uh, clearance, heart rate, and reflex. Dressed again. Just be careful of the of the endings. Reflexes. Uh, reflexes. Clearances. Clearances. Yeah, when you've got an ES <clears throat> and it's extra, if it's not normally part of the word, we have to say it we have to say it as a separate syllable. So reflex ends with X, but plural X E S is an extra syllable. Yeah. Re reflexes. Yeah. And dressed uh, again, they went uh, into the empty cafeteria, cafeteria for a snack and sat on the stools, arguing, uh, arguing 
Arguing. Arguing. EU. Arguing. Arguing. Good. Uh, what to call this new uh, fifth meal? Probably suggest uh, my food. Mid food. Ah, mid food. Uh, more like much. Munch. 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 <laughs> instead of instead of lunch, <laughs> it's midnight and lunch together. Midnight and lunch, munch. Okay. <laughs> At uh, two, they they took uh, their place in the neurology 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 uh, neurology uh, theater uh, and spend a couple of hours watching films on the. Hippodrills. Hip, uh, Good. Hypnodrills. Hypnodrills. Of the past three weeks. When the program uh, ended, uh, they start started uh, down for the uh, gym. 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 Good. The night almost over. They were still relaxed and uh, cheerful. I got to read uh, the why playfully. Oh, sorry, this is a mistake. It should be over here. Right, playfully teasing. 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 Land over some of the episodes in the films, mimicking his uh, trends like walk. Age. You shouldn't. Eyes Mo shut. 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 Mouth open. He demonstrated uh, uh, swer swerving in the rank, who jumped nimbly uh, out of nimbly. his way. Nimbly. Nimbly. Nimbly is like with good coordination. Like a jaguar is very nimble. Good what? Like a jaguar is a nimble animal. They've got good coordination. He jumped nimbly out of his way. Out of his way. <coughs> look, look at you. You're going in heaven now. Believe me, Lang, you are not awake. You are uh, somnambulating. 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 Okay. So wh what's he doing if he's somnambulating? What's he doing? Uh, you you walk uh, 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 while asleep. <laughs> exactly. So the doctor who's with him can't even stay awake, and they're starting to make fun of him. They're teasing him. Come on, eyes shut, mouth open. He demonstrated. You're just sleepwalking. <laughs> okay. Uh, by the way, if there's any questions at any time, just ask because I'm trying to ask questions to help you get the main details of the story but if there's specific words or anything like that just ask at any time okay let's go on to Mr. Nasho let's take it to the end of the page here okay he called back to Morley agreed doctor Morley swallowed a yawn well if he is that makes two of us he followed them along the corridor, doing his best to stay awake, feeling as if he and not the three men in front of him had been without sleep for the last three weeks. Though the clinic was quiet, at Neil's orders, all lights along the corridors and down the stairway had been left, left on. Ahead of them, two order, orderlies checked that window they passed were safely screened and doors were shut. Nowhere was there a single dark, darkened uh, alcove or shadow trap. Neil had insisted on this, reluctantly acknowledging a possibly reflex association between darkness and sleep. Let's admit it, in all but a few organisms the association is strong enough to be a reflex. The higher mammals depend for their survival of, on a highly Acute sensory apparatus combined with a varying ability Ver, like this varying, 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 varying 
ability to store and classify information. Plunge them into darkness, cut off the flow of visual data to their cortex and they're paralyzed. Sleep is a defense reflex. It lowers the metabolic rate, conserves energy, increases the organism's survival potential by merging in it into its habitat. <laughs> I guess this is Morley's interior monologue about why they performed this surgery, I suppose. Um, what was the question I was going to ask you? Uh, 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 um, uh, I forgot. <laughs> I don't know. I had something to ask you, but I can't remember. Oh, yeah, the orderlies. Sorry. Just vocabulary. What are orderlies? Are they people or are they things? What are orderlies? You know? No. Orderlies are male hospital workers. Okay. Not nurses. They're like, do little jobs, but not really the medical jobs. Kind of the maintenance and carrying patients around, orderlies. So the orderlies, what were they checking for, Nasha? What were they worried about? If everything was closed, like, uh, shut, the, the windows, the, the screens, and if all the lights were uh, turned off. Because if they weren't off, if all the lights were turned on, you mean, turned on. Yeah, exactly. Because if the lights were turned off, what might happen? Uh, they could uh, fall asleep because of reflex uh, association. Yeah, they're they're not sure, but they're worried that this reflex is so powerful that uh, it could affect them. So if they're not taking chances, not yet, because they just finished the surgery. Okay, very good. So I'm going to take this next little part because it's mostly dialogue, and then we'll go back around the room one more time. Just quickly, not the whole thing, maybe just this part. On the landing, so now a little forward. On the landing, halfway down the staircase was a wide, shuttered window that, by day, opened out to the parkscape behind the clinic. That means like the park, the parkscape, like the cityscape, the landscape. In other words, the view of the park. As he passed it, Gorel stopped. <clears throat> went over, released the blind, then unlatched the shutter. Still holding it closed, he turned to Morley, watching from the flight above. Taboo, doctor? Taboo meaning, should I do it? Is it wrong to do it? Morley looked at each of the three men in turn. Gorel was calm, unperturbed, apparently satisfying nothing more sinister than an idle whim. Lang sat on the rail, watching curiously with an expression of clinical disinterest. Only Avery seemed slightly anxious, his thin face wan and pinched. That should be wan. I think it's spelled wrong. Wan. I think it's like wax and wan means like thin, not full. <laughs> Morley had an irrelevant thought. 4 a.m. shadow. They'll need to shave twice a day. Then, why is it Neil here? He knew they'd make for a window as soon as they got a chance. So they knew he, he knew they'd make for a window. By the way, Neil, let's just be clear. <laughs> now I'm forgetting because we, we read it last Thursday and I didn't have a chime time chance to review it. So Neil is the other doctor, right? Help me out, Daniel. Do you remember? Mr. Correll. Yes, it's the main doctor. The main doctor, okay. That's what I thought. All right, we're back to you, Daniel. Can you take it from here? Yes. He noticed Lang giving him an amused smile and a shrug, trying to disguise his... Disguise. Disguise. His... <laughs> what? The key word there is easy in the center, easy. easy. But you've got a prefix and a suffix. An easiness. Good. Go ahead if you want to. <clears throat> As Neil said, the wires are cut. Go, go ahead. Go ahead and do what? 
go ahead and what? Go ahead if you want to. To to do what? Uh, to to jump from the window. Or I don't know. To, 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 um, I don't know if it's jump because that no, would no, be no. bad. <laughs> uh, no. um, Is it jump or just look out the window? Look out! Look out! Look out the window. Yeah, I think so. Look out! Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Gorel threw back the shutter and they clustered round the window and stared out into the night. Below, pewter ray lawns stretched towards the pines and low hills in the distance. A couple of miles away on their left, a neon sign winked and beckoned. What color is pewter? Pewter is a kind of metal. What color is pewter? I don't know. And silver. Yeah, silver. So at night, everything looks like silver. Pewter mm. lawns. The grass looks like silver. Keep going. Neither Gorel nor Land noticed any reaction. And their interest began to flag within a few moments. Every felt a sudden leaf under the hair heart, then controlled himself. His eyes began to sift the darkness. The sky was clear and cloudless, and through the stars he pick, picked out the narrow, milky traverse of the galactic ring. He watched it silently, letting the wind cool the sweat on his face and neck. What? Last sentence. Wind. Wind. And sweat. Sweat. Well, one the more time. The letting the wind cool the sweat on his face and neck. So let's be clear. What did he see in the sky at night? What's this thing? The milky traverse? He milk sees like milk. Yeah. Wh white color. And 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 what's what's the white color thing we see if the sky is really really clear? The stars. Not just the stars, but and our the moon. Not just the moon, but our galaxy, the Milky uh -huh. Way. Ah, ah. Milky Way. Okay. So he looks up and he sees. If 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 the sky is really clear, like if you're in the mountains or something like that. In the Canary Islands, where there's no pollution or something like that, mm -hmm. high up in the mountains, you can see the actual galaxy. You can see the the uh, the streak in the middle of the sky. Some animals have evolved to use the Milky Way mm -hmm. to 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 migrate because it's always in the same position in the sky. Like like certain insects have this built-in navigational thing. They can spot the Milky Way and they use it to crawl across the desert, that kind of thing. Anyway, so they look out at night. Have they seen the night since the surgery? Or is this the first time? It's the first time, no? The very first time they've experimented with darkness in this yeah. particular moment. Okay? Uh, we lost Mr. Sanchez. I guess he had to go to work. So let's go back to Mr. Adrian. Can you take this part? Oh, Sean, uh, I I can hear you. Uh, Say well, um, What's think, that? Uh, Say again? There, there are uh, a problem. You there cannot hear? There is a pro uh, technical problem, I think. You cannot hear or you cannot uh, see? Uh, I, I hear sometimes <laughs> you. We hear you. You sound fine. I you sound okay. Okay. So, do you want to continue to read on page 11? No, uh, I, I, um, uh, I pass. Uh, okay, no problem. Okay, but uh, I, I, I can't hear very well. On page 11, though, 
I'll I'll pass to Nasho. Okay, and Adrian, you can follow along. Okay, so Nasho, um, why don't you continue on page eleven? More this stepped. See where we are. Marley stepped over the wi to the window and leaned his elbows on the steel next to Avery. Out of the corner of his eye, he carefully waited for any motor tremor. A flattering eyelid accelerated breathing that would signal a reflex Sig no. signal, a reflex discharging. He remembered Neil's warning. In man's sleep is largely volitional, and the reflex is conditioned by habit. But just because we've cut out the hypothalamic, hypothalamic loops regulating the flow of consciousness, doesn't mean the reflex won't discharge down some other pathway. However, sooner or later, we'll have to take the risk and give them a glimpse of the dark side of the sun. Marley was musing on this because something mad nudged his shoulder. Dr. Nudged? What is nudged? Do you know? Uh, like, touch very softly? Yeah, touched. Get your attention. Nudged is like touching your shoulder. Okay, good. Uh, doctor, he heard Lang say, Dr. Marley, he pulled himself together with a start. He was alone at the window. Gorel and Avery were halfway down the next flight of stairs. What's up? Morley asked quickly. Nothing, Lang assured him. We've just going back to the team. He looked closely at Morley. Are you alright? Morley rubbed his face. God, I must have been asleep. He glanced at his watch. For twenty. They had been at the window for over fifteen minutes. All he could remember was leaning on the seal, and I and I was worried about you. Everybody was amused, Gorel particularly. Doctor, he drawled, if you're interested, I can recommend you to a good nar narcotomist. Narcotomist. <laughs> narcotomist. What what is a narcotomist? Uh, I, I have no, think it's a no doctor idea. who regulates the sleep. Some weeds. Yeah. What's that? Some wits. Which? Oh, which? <laughs> because narcolepsy. I, I can't. I can't see a narco Thomas is a real word. Uh, it it seems like something that J. G. Ballard invented for the story, but narcolepsy is the is the disease where you fall asleep. You can't control your sleep, so you sleep all the time. So narcotomist, I don't know if it's like if that's like a a doctor who deals with sleep. <laughs> Daniel says weed. Maybe I don't know. Maybe it's a drug. I think it's I think it's like a maybe it's like a pharmacist, a narcotomist. Oh, but narco could also be narcotic, so it could be drugs. Hard to say. Anyway. I think J.G. Ballard invented it. I have a feeling. All right. So something happens. Let, let's just be clear. What happens at the windowsill, this little moment? What's, what's, uh, what's the scene about? Before we leave it, Nasha. What's the, what's the event? This is kind of the first clue that something is maybe going on, like a little hint of something to come, I think. That's my feeling. So what happens at the windowsill? Besides that, they're looking out. Does something unusual happen? It's like he falls asleep, right? Yeah. Who falls asleep? Uh, Morley. Morley. Is Morley the patient or the doctor? The doctor. Right. So nothing unusual. He looks out. It's four in the morning. He turns around, and they're gone. <laughs> yep. They're halfway down the, the thing. So, and then... And then Gorel makes fun of him. Oh, if you want, I can get you a narcotomist, someone to help you stop falling asleep. I have a feeling that that scene is important. 
Just a feeling. I don't know. Uh, the last time I read the story, I was probably 15, so I don't really remember, but uh, I have a feeling that's important for later on. All right. So in the next part, I'll just read the, the, the uh, dialogue here. After 5 o'clock, they felt a gradual ebb of the tonus from their arm and leg muscles. Renal clearances were falling, and breakdown products were slowly clogging their tissues. Their palms felt damp and numb, the soles of their feet like pads of sponge rubber. The sensation was vaguely unsettling, allied to no feelings of mental fatigue. So it seems like they're feeling uh, the sleep problem, like, but they can't sleep. They're feeling everything but not tiredness. The numbness spread, and Avery noticed it, stretching the skin over his cheekbones, pulling at his temples, giving him a slight frontal migraine. He doggedly turned the pages of a magazine, his hands like lumps of putty. Then Neil came down, and they began to revive. Neil looked fresh and spruce, bouncing on the tips of his toes. How's the night shift going? He, bris he asked bristly. Walking, he asked bristly, walking round each one of them in turn, smiling. He sized them up. Feel all right? Not too bad, doctor, Gorel told him. A slight case of insomnia. Ha, 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 ha. That's their little joke. A slight case of insomnia. Neil roared. He slapped him on the shoulder and led the way up to the surgery laboratory. So what's the joke there about the slight case of insomnia? What's the joke? I think it's because they can't sleep because of the surgery, so slight <laughs> case of insomnia is like... Yeah, a slight case of insomnia, you know, just for the rest of their lives, right? <laughs> Uh, we have a few minutes left. Go ahead. Adrian, you were saying? I thought I heard Adrian talking. Yeah, uh, yeah, I... Okay. Yes, Adrian. Question uh, or read? Uh, read. Go for it. Uh, at night, uh, shaved and in fresh clothes, uh, they assembled in the lecture room. They felt uh, cool and alert again. The peripheral uh, numbness and slight heat torpor had gone as soon as the, the, uh, the toxic, I don't know the, the, this the, word. The center, the center, the key part is toxic, but you have a uh, prefix and a suffix. The toxic, the the toxic. I don't know. <laughs> the apes. Like this. Been... <laughs> D. D. Toxic. Detoxic. Detoxication. Ah, uh, the the detoxication. Detoxication. Detoxication drips have been plugged. In the night, told. Uh, wait, 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 wait. The detoxication drips had been plugged in, comma, virgula, comma. Yeah. Next, next thought. And Neil told them. So two different ideas there. Yeah. The detoxication drips had been plugged in, and I told them. Neil, 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 told Neil told them that within a week their kidneys, kidneys, kidneys will uh, have uh, enlarged sufficiently to cope on their own. So one thing that happens when you sleep is that your body eliminates toxins. Okay. Yeah. Right. Your liver cleans the blood. Your kidney cleans out the urea from your system, the the, uh, the the acidic stuff, 
and, and you urinate to get rid of that acidic stuff. So the kidneys produce urine. Right now, they're too weak because it's a new surgery. But apparently, they've invented some kind of detoxification thing to until their bodies can cope without it. So this is like one of the side effects. So they're up there getting a medical examination. Okay? So take okay. us to the end of the page there, Adrian. We have just a, a minute left. Keep going. All morning, all, uh, most of the afternoon, they worked on a series of AQ, Associative and Performance Tests. They kept uh, them hard at beat, string, uh, swirling blips of light around a cathedral screen, juggling with uh, intricate uh, numerical and geometric sequence, elaborating word chains. He seemed uh, more than satisfied uh, with the results. Shorter access times, deeper memory trace. Traces. Traces, yeah, traces. Uh, he pointed out the uh, morally when three men, uh, three men had gone off a five or four the rest period. Barrels of prime physic marrow. Psychic marrow. Psychic marrow. He uh, guess Just gestured. Gestured. At the test cards spread out across the desk in his office, and you were worried about the unconscious, 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 unconscious. Look at the uh, look. Look at the roar shacks. It's a test the where tests. you see where you see ink on a card, and the ink is in different shapes. The old Sigmund Freud roar shock test. Okay, believe me, Sean, I'll soon have him reminiscing about his uh, fetal? fetal experience. Morley noted, noted his first doubts uh, falling. Uh -huh. So, that is going to be the end of part three. It'll bring us to part four. Which we're gonna, and what I think I'm gonna do is, I'm probably gonna give you a little bit of, um, I'm gonna try to give you some comprehension questions to think about, and I'm going to try to assign some of the reading to do between now and Thursday, okay? I don't know how much time we're gonna have, because the story is so long that we can't read the whole thing in class. So I might ask you to read a bit on your own, and give you some questions to think about and then on Thursday we'll read some important parts we'll finish it over the weekend because it's really long actually it's long but it's interesting <laughs> at least I hope you find it interesting um, okay so we have to stop now uh, I'm going to begin the business class in just 30 seconds where we just started a brand new unit in getting results in business about Culture, that's what it is. Our, our unit on business culture. So we'll be working on vocabulary in the next class. This class will happen again on Thursday at 9 o'clock GMT. Bye for now, everyone. See you soon. Bye. Thank you, Bye for now. Bye.